Let me center you. There we go. Today is the day of my shop update and generally after shop update, especially the day of and the next few days, my brain like can't function because I've been so into creating whatever I was working on for that shop update that when it's the next day or the day of, I'm like, what do I do now? <laughs> and something that I've had for a long time that has been in my mind is, oh, it's so pretty. I have this aquamarine ring that I made. It's one of the very first rings that I ever made and I'll get you closer so you can see, but even from here, <laughs> you can see just how lopsided and awful it was. And I can say awful because I made it, but I've come a long way and I wanna show that by remaking this ring. And it's just, it's such a stunning aquamarine. It has a beautiful rainbow inside. Let me show you. So this is the aquamarine. You can kind of see the rainbow through the camera. It's not the best. It's not like it is in real life, but I mean, look at these prongs. Look at this setting. Look how thin and flimsy. This band is, I knew nothing, nothing when I made this ring. And oh God, look, it's totally lopsided sitting in there. But you know what, that's okay because that's where I started. As proud of it as I was, like I, I wanna make it into something I can really be proud of so I can show off this gorgeous aquamarine. So I just looked, I made that ring like end of April, beginning of May of last year. That's about a year ago, a year and a month. Holy moly, I've come a long way. <laughs> it's a nice size stone. God, look how pretty it looks with the chalcedony. So nice. Anyways, um, I'm trying to think of the type of setting I wanna do. It's definitely gonna be a prong setting. Maybe an east-west would be pretty. Well, I'll wrap my brain around it. I'm thinking maybe cathedral shoulders. East-west setting. It's gonna look beautiful. It looks like there's a little chip right there. You see that? So we're gonna have to cover that with a prong so that it doesn't get bigger. Today is a new day. I had so much trouble focusing yesterday on what I wanted to do and how I wanted to do it. I just, you know, I took that day and I tried to mentally get myself prepared. But I spent the whole night thinking about what I want to do with this aquamarine and I figured it out, which is amazing because I figured it out. <laughs> There is a type of setting I've always wanted to try. So I personally love bezel settings on faceted stones. Also like to have the opening of a prong setting where it lets light through. So I am going to try an open bezel setting on this. And I've seen it done before by professional jewelers. I think I know how to do it. <laughs> so we're gonna see how it goes. I was just going through some scrap silver that I have. And I found exactly what I needed already done. <laughs> Woohoo! So I won't need to roll this out. This is thick enough, but it's really dirty and it's not quite flat. So I'm gonna pickle it and then try and flatten it as much as I can. And then we can start making this open bezel for this ring. While that's pickling, I'm just gonna look to see if I have anything that I can use for the ring shank in my catch tray. I do have this. I just don't know how big it is. 2.1. So I could roll this out a little bit more because this wouldn't even make a size six ring. Whoops. So this is two by 2.1 right now and I could get it out to 1.6. Seven is probably the smallest I would go. I prefer 1.8. I don't know how much length I'll get, but we're gonna try it. Okay. 
So now that our sheet is nice and clean, I am going to try and make my open bezel. Now I've seen people super glue their gems directly onto their metal, but that kind of freaks me out because <laughs> I don't know if acetone is going to harm this aquamarine with all these inclusions. I'm going to try and use some blue tack just to tack it down and see how that works. But wait, there's more. This is the unfortunate reality of metal smithing. I just spent the past like three hours making two bezels. Neither one is going to work because unfortunately I burned a little bit too much on one side and there's just a gap and if you have a gap on your bezel especially on a bezel like this there's no coming back from that you're gonna have a, a wavy wonky bezel wall so I melted down some more silver it is in the pickle pot and then I have to roll it out and then I can start again trying to make this bezel for a third time I'm not gonna lie to you guys, this took me five hours and three attempts to get right, but I finally got it, and the fit is spot on. Now I'm gonna shape this bezel to look <laughs> decent, because it's pretty all over the place right now. We've got our ring and we've got our bezel and now I need to join them. Mm, I'll show you this way so you can see. So normally, right, your bezel goes like all the way to the ring shank, but since this is an open bezel, I'm doing it a little bit differently. Almost like there's prongs that where the prongs, the under, like the basket uh, connects to the shank. It's gonna kind of be like that, but it's not gonna come up past the bezel. It's just gonna kind of bring it all together. <laughs> I rolled out some wire that we're gonna use for the prongs that are going to fix the bezel to the ring shank. And I'm not gonna do four, I'm only gonna do two. So I'm gonna make like a V or a U shape um, and I'm gonna set this east-west so it's gonna be long instead of tall. Let's see if I can make it work. <laughs>
gonna give you my honest opinion. Right now, I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't know why all I see is a snowman. Like, it just looks like a snowman to me. Like, that's his body and that's his head and he's got his hat on, you just don't see the top. This is really... discouraging. I'm going to finish it and see how it looks, but at the moment, I really don't like it. I lied, I'm not gonna finish it. I don't like it, I really don't like it. Like I polished it off, I thought maybe um, if I go through a few polishing compounds, it might look nicer to me, and it doesn't. It looks like a snowman. <laughs> So no more Olaf ring, it's done. I'm, I'm not finishing it. I'm so sorry that you don't get to see the end of this video with like a, a nice piece of jewelry, but I'm not gonna spend my time on something that I don't believe in. So this is the reality of metalsmithing. Sometimes something is great in your head and then maybe not so great in execution thinking back on this there are a few things that i would change trying to do this again but i'm not going to do it right now i need to step away from this project do something else and maybe come back to it started the snowman and this is where we finished and this ring is definitely better than the original ring that I made a year ago but I still have my faults with it and there are still things that if I were to remake even right now I would change but it is really pretty <laughs> I mean you can't go wrong with this insanely beautiful aquamarine but let me get you closer so you can see what I mean I hope you liked this video meaning I hope you enjoyed it if you did enjoy it I would love for you to like it <laughs> And if you enjoy this sort of content, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel and watch me grow as a self-taught metalsmith. This ring will not be available. Um, this aquamarine, when I purchased this lot of aquamarines, I always knew that this one was mine. <laughs> so this particular ring will not be for sale. This is my ring, but I have a ton of other aquamarines that I can make into something similar if someone's interested. And now I have done my first open bezel and I do quite love how it passes the light through so you can really see the brilliance of the stone. But your stone is nice and protected and since we did have a chip on this aquamarine, I don't have to worry about it anymore. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.